Initiating startup sequence. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. You are now plugged in. Hey guys, and thank you for tuning in. This is episode 201 of the Plug and Play Podcast. I'm your host, Zach, and alongside me, as always, is Tim. Welcome, minions. So, Tim, it's been a week since we recorded episode 200, and I think I pooped out all my glitter. So, uh, other than that, what have you been up to? I didn't check, but... Um, I mean, I, I think uh, I, like, like gold rush pan style that shit. I mean, that could explain my, my stomach discomfort. See? Too, some heavy metal deposits. You might have heavy metal deposits in your gut still from the yeah, brewing. Yeah, we could say we did that now, so we don't need to ever do that again. Never do it again. No. Never. Um, that was disgusting. It was there. It was probably because it was a style beer it's that we didn't like. like it's kind of like a Twix fruit salad. If it's in front of me, I have to try it. Not that I'd seek it out, but it, it was there. We did it. You what the say fuck we, is a Twix fruit salad? Some obscene thing I saw on Facebook. Someone posted. It's just what exactly what it sounds like. Fruit salad that has Twix. Twix candy bar? Mm-hmm. That's weird. Um, before you start uh, talking about what we've been up to, we should actually go back and you should intro what our tasty treat for the week is. Sure. Um, today we are sipping um, a Ghost Owl whiskey. It's local. I was not prepared to. Um, I don't have it looked yeah, up. Yeah, neither do I. So but it's... it is it is Portland, Oregon. It's a local spirit. I, so I'm sorry. I don't know the company that makes it. But um, I first tried it at the Thirsty Sasquatch, which I finally got to take you to the other week. Yeah, it was very good. Um, and they didn't have it then when I took you. But I think we took it. Didn't we have some across the street? Yeah, we did. Um, but anyway, I got a bottle of it. Um, it's hard to find oddly here in Washington, which is just across the border. But it's so weird. It's everywhere in uh, Portland. I was um, on my staycation. We wandered by a liquor store and I bought a bottle. And um, yeah, we just, just now cracked it open. So cheers. Cheers. It's pretty smooth, I think. It's very smooth. Um, still got a little zing at the end, but it's... It's good. It's different. It's um. It's not like a burn. Mm-hmm. Let you know it's there, though. Yeah. Um. So what I've been up to? Well, my daughter is off to yet another camp. I think she's got oh like my four God. or five. This it, it's making Adventure Time Tuesdays almost non-existent this 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 uh, entire summer. Um. But she's in camp. I heard that her team won today. They get assigned a color and then they have games and. Her team won today, so that's cool. So as part of that, um, this was the camp I decided to write postcards to her. Um, in previous years, I've written postcards for all of her camps, but she just has too many this year. So this was the one I did it. Um, in prior years, I've done like little comic strips. Um, Hold on, we, had, we dad, got it. Dad we got, jokes. We got to do an homage for uh, for uh, yes Adventure Time Tuesday since it's dead. It's not dead. It's, it's just... dead. It's dead. You lost a life. Well, I... I still got two more. Um, it will. It will. Re... Two more what? Two more lives. That's one life. Hey, you can't do that. That's arbitrary. <laughs> Stop it. So uh, this year, son of a bitch. I got her five postcards, and they had like all sorts of weird sayings on them. Like um, one was it showed a woman, like a stereotypical fifties like style woman, and it said, um, "If you can bake a cake, you can build a bomb." <laughs> um, hey ev- Tim, everyone lo- what? You lost all your lives. Oh well, shit! I guess the podcast is over then. Yep. All right. Um, Literally, I just closed out of everything on accident. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's on you know the the printed part of the postcard, but then I had to fill it in with my own stuff. So I put in some like really bizarre deaths because she revealed to me. I think I told you on the podcast. She has like yeah, she's a like a phobia of dying randomly. So that's why I made her watch Final Destination two. Um, so I put at the bottom of each postcard a like really random death. My favorite, I think, of all five was the one guy who fell into a brick making machine, and by by the time they discovered it, he was gone. Like he was literally made into bricks. So they had to bury a bunch of bricks. Um, yeah. Um, nice. Facts like that. And I then, like the one. Do you remember the one that was in, uh, I think it was in California somewhere, where the lady like climbed up into a uh, like a big metal housing that held all the water? Mm. And she drowned herself up there. And they didn't Wasn't find it in Portland? It might have been in Portland. They didn't find her for like weeks. Yeah, reservoir. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like... The people in the hotel have been like showering with the water and 
showering it in her. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's why I drink whiskey. It's safer. Yeah, it kills all the dead bodies mm-hmm. in the water. So on top of the death facts, I would write like something silly. Um, like, this is what... Did you know you're supposed to poop three times a day? Stuff like that? No, more like stuff like this is what the cat's been up to. This is what your little brother's been up to. You know, watching Minecraft videos. Um, I wrote it... I, I don't know if she's going to get the reference. In fact, I'm almost sure she won't. I Are you familiar with the game um, Let It Die? That's the one where you play like Death, right? No, um, Uncle Death is like the mascot. Okay, the, yeah, yeah. But you don't play as him. You okay, play okay. as like a revived course. Yeah, you've played it before and I've watched you. You play as a revived course. We saw it at PAX. It was a really cool photo opportunity with a bunch of models um, with tubes hanging out of them in a subway. Do you remember that at PAX? You did that interview, not me. Oh, man, it was so good. I didn't good. go to that one. So good. Um, I feel like this game could have blown up if it would had been structured just slightly differently. Like, it happened before PUBG, and it had a bu- it was free-to-play. You start with a base level zero character. The thing was, it wasn't... Wasn't on- it free-to... Yeah, it was free-to-play. Mm-hmm. But you had to, like, pay for shit. It was, like, in-game buys, right? Yeah, but you have to pay for everything in all these type of games. Yeah, well, the problem was, it wasn't a hun- one versus 100. Anyway, mascot in that series is called Uncle Death, and he says... His like catchphrase is "Hey Senpai," which is like an honorific in Japanese. So I would start every postcard with a little picture of him, him saying "Hi Senpai," Senpai, however you pronounce it. And so I'm gonna it's probably ma- Senpu actually. It's not Senpu. It's Senpai or Senpei. Senpi. I just want to pronounce it Senpi. right. But anyway, that's something for her to puzzle over because it's. She'll come up. She'll be like, "What the fuck is that, Dad?" It's kind of obscure, um, but she'll figure it out because she 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 does anyway. So I brought a bunch of postcards. That was fun. And then uh, since I'm going to give equal time to my kids, um, I came home after the gym and my son had spent probably the whole time I was gone uh, going through the house and transforming our house into what in his head was a real life version of Baldi, that game I talked about that I hate. Um, It's a really low-fi graphics. There's this character called Baldi that slaps a ruler, chases you around to school. You have to collect five notebooks. And there's other weird characters that sounds mess. super dumb. He's really into it, and apparently it's pretty popular with streamers right now. Even Roger streamed it um, from the Button Smashers. Yeah, man, I know who Roger is. Well, it's it's a thing with the kids. Um, so anyway, he spent a lot of effort. Like he put like clues around. Um, he chased you the ruler. He did, and he had he had three different characters. There's like, apparently a girl with a, um, a jump rope that you have to try to time your jumps with, so you would jump rope in front of me. With a USB cord, because he couldn't find a jump rope, apparently. <laughs> and there's another character... And like, that cord shot. He, he said it was broken already. Oh. Um, there's another character that kind of bebops with headphones. He did that. There's another character that kind of sweeps you off. He's like the janitor or something. He would switch characters while I was collecting these clues. He hid six of my PlayStation games and my remote controls to my TV in my bedroom around the house. Um, I kind of turned the tables on him. And because he kept running after me, these characters, he said, the only thing that Baldi can make him go away is a bottle of soda. And so I threw the bottle of soda. He was like, it only lasts 10 seconds. I'm like, well, that's stupid. So I grabbed the Master Sword, the foam one I had. Yeah. He said, you know what? The Master Sword kills everything. <laughs> He's like, no, it doesn't. I'm like, yes, it does. And I started like stabbing with the Master Sword. and like, so I'll That's char- awesome. He'd come and character at me or something. I would just like poke, poke, poke. Like, <laughs> Stop it. That's and apparently awesome. I found a bell at one point that apparently will lock any door. So I pushed him in the bathroom and locked the door. <laughs> said, hey, you're locked. The bell's locked. It only lasts 30 seconds. Well, I rang it again. <laughs> so we had fun. Uh, the thing the, the thing was, I haven't played Baldi, and he has. So he's kind of expecting me to like know all the rules. And I really didn't. So I just started breaking them. Like I, That's awesome. Like I, but it was fun. Um, That's, good. That's a good memory. Good bonding time. I think so. It was you know quasi-video game related. Yeah. So I have some sad news. Oh. So let's bring it down since we're having fun. Okay. Um, I canceled my pre-order for my for my flamethrower. Did you actually get your cash back? I did. In PayPal. Holy shit! I can't believe they actually gave it five hundred and sixteen dollars. So the day that they announced on Twitter that there's going to be another launch party in Washington D.C., you were like Washington, yes, no, D.C. No. Fuck. They also emailed me, and I emailed them back, said, "You know, give me a shipping confirmation or just refund my money." didn't hear from him that was june 17th today i was like okay it's been about a week hey what's the status of my refund i actually got a response in about five five hours here's your refund yeah and so cool i'm refunded wow um now I, if you accidentally get shipped a flamethrower don't mention it on the podcast 
Okay. I I don't know. I, I'm kind of over my hero worship of Elon, Elon Musk. He's done, yes! some, he's done some real shitty things. I wouldn't mind owning a flamethrower, but hey, I have $500 back, so... That means we have $500 to fuck with the packs. If I don't spend it between now and then... God damn it, Tim, don't spend it between now and then. Give me the $500, I'll set it off to the side. That is the last thing I will do, is give you control of my $500. Give me $500, I'll set it off to the side, and I'll give it back to your packs. Mm-hmm. It is now on episode 201. It's, it's actually in my credit card now. It's kind of weird, because it was... Ref- Funded. Oh, so you got like a credit, like a five hundred dollar credit? Yeah, so I know which credit card has a five hundred and sixteen dollar credit on it. So I'll probably be paying for our hotel with that <laughs> particular credit card. But then I have to give you cash. What do you mean? Then I have to give you cash. What do you mean? Who has to give me cash? I would have to. Oh, this isn't happening. It's funny that you think that's even possible. So moving on from sad news, I have. Wait, what? We're moving, moving away from sad news. No, wait. Why is that not happening? I'm so confused. Because I said so. I'm not giving you a five hundred dollars. Give me the five hundred dollars. I'm gonna save it for packs. Uh huh. We're gonna go. We have a fucking good time at packs. <laughs> we're gonna wake up in a gutter, probably stabbed. Definitely. Dude, drunk. heroin needles. It's fine. Yeah. No. That that's God actually that's actually a possibility in Seattle. No, well, thank yeah. You. No, thank you. Um. So coming away from that, dude. Stuff, we're gonna go down the Hard Rock Alley. People would be pissing and selling weed all at the same time. I'm only okay with one of those things. Um, so Dude, you got some weird president fetishes. Uh, that's the <laughs> way you're going. Do you want to hear my happier news or yep, not? Yep, yep. Okay, yep. I watched something that I think you'd enjoy. Okay, what's that? I want you to click on it and play for our listeners. Oh, God damn. Yourself. Life can be dangerous when you're a dark tourist. Oh, this is fucking sick as hell. My name is David Ferrier, and I've always been drawn to the weirder side of life. So I I've decided to something. investigate dark tourism, a global phenomenon with yes! places associated with death and destruction. What is it about going into war zones? Because I don't want to see it in a documentary. Do you want to see it firsthand? Oh my god, the level of radiation, that's higher than around Chernobyl. I'm into death. This is Jeffrey Dahmer. Women yeah. like bad boys. Serial killers are like yes. definition of bad boys. Yes, yes, they are. Pablo Escobar too is. Popeye, you kills people in this compound, right? See, si. People love it. People want to meet you. People want to talk to you. It's like taking a weird holiday, some escapism, before going back to your normal dull existence. Fuck yes! I sort of want to see what's going on, but I also don't want to be in the Totally way. watching this with my son. I Life is full of dangers. You know, that's the thing, right? Yeah. Might get hit by a bus tomorrow. David, you're going to get hurt tonight. Right. You're going to get drowned. You're going to get buried. Somebody's going to die tonight, you know? That vibe is just out there like the devil's out tonight. I've been forced out of my comfort zone, and somehow it's made me feel even more happy to be alive. I mean, how many dead bodies have you seen? Hundreds. Hundreds. Yeah, see, I've just seen one now. Maybe that's the whole point of Dark Tourism. Dark Tourist on Netflix now. It's like a series? Mm-hmm. He goes to fucked up places all around the I world. I am so watching this as I go to sleep tonight. What's funny is, like, at least on the show, he presents himself as kind of a pansy, which is kind of hilarious in Weird. some of the situations he's in. So I think you totally enjoy it. All right, so that's pretty much what I've been up to. What about you? Um, well, I uh, recorded a new podcast this week. We uh, gave the little trailer a few weeks ago mm-hmm. and a deadline. Mm-hmm. So You're coming along. I, I am. I've heard progress, but it's time for a listener's check in with you. So uh, we got. I'm not going to play the trailer or the episode because I actually sent you a full an yep. entire episode. Um, and I am going to play the intro for it because that's what i have here for you guys to listen to so uh this is the intro for podcast junkie so i uh yeah so i went ahead and did that this week and i got an episode uh created it's saved off and ready to go and so that's one out of 30 that I want to have done before I launch. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, so I did that. Um, I watched a whole shitload of Supernatural. We're like on season like eight now. Uh, I think you're probably ahead of where I kind of dropped off now. So. Are you past the things that open their mouths really wide? Yeah. Well, we're like still with them, but like kind of past them. Okay. You're just where I kind of dropped off. Okay. 
So, yeah, we did that. We're watching that. We're going to finish it out, apparently. Cool. Um, I went to Magic Night on Friday night. Did you actually play Magic? I did. Okay. Um, Are you still playing, like, like four people all at the same time? No, uh, sometimes you had teams of two and shit like that. Sometimes mm-hmm. a five-pointed star. Okay. Um, and then sometimes if we get group, like, bigger, usually it goes from, like, five to, like, 12 of us. Just, like, randomly. There's never, like, an in-between. So then that's, like, a six teams of two. Okay. And it's just ridiculous. Um, and then we also, I showed up to work on Monday and found out that, like, my whole entire, like, infrastructure for my company has, like, been toasted and crypto-locked with ransomware. That's awesome way to start yeah, your Monday. Exactly. So um, I spent the past two days working on that, basically. And I've been at work since so, 3.30 a.m. this was morning. Was there, like, a ransom demand, like, asking for a certain amount of So money? there was a file that I found after everything was done, or not, it, everything's still not done, said. But there was a file I found after, basically, cutting off the infected files mm-hmm. that had, like, exclamation, dash, 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 how to unlock, dash, 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 exclamation. And, but I wasn't going to open it, so... Yeah. So, yes, there was instructions, I would assume. I'm just wondering how many Bitcoin you have to buy. Mm, I'm thinking they actually want credit card cash. Ooh. Yeah, probably like 50000 Now I know why you want my credit card. You set up a bitch. I don't want your credit card. I just want the $500 cash, stick it inside my fucking computer case, and then we'll grab it before we go to PAX. Your computer's infected. No way. Not my computer. My computer got the shop's even good. Hmm. So, we do have one toasted computer, and I'm not going to point fingers, but... The so timing of this is hilarious. Nice. I don't think I'll do that. No, I don't think so. Um, wait, did you have an order in for one? No. Oh, okay. But those are behind, too. Yeah, those are way behind, actually. Um, so, that was extremely sad news and depressing. I've been, the work, I've been at work since, like, 3.30 this morning. So How you feeling, bud? I'm tired. Mm-hmm. But I do have something... I also have something pretty funny. So, my son likes to say, fork... And he used to call it fuck. Yes, that was hilarious. So, but now we're reading books with frogs, and apparently frogs are fucks. So I recorded <laughs> him saying frog. So this is my son saying frog. It's the cutest thing ever. Fuck. 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 <laughs> so we're reading a frog book, and he's just like, fuck. I'm going to write I'm gonna write a kid book, kid's book about some adventure with a frog that like likes forks. Yes. The forking frogs. <laughs> the frogs of forks. <laughs> I'm going to... Actually, that'd be great. Like, I I would get an illustrator, make it about read like readable to his age. Yep. Get it published, and then we could do this to parents everywhere. Oh yes, we could. That'd be genius. Exactly. We should kickstart this. We should kickstart this. Speaking of kickstarts, we're coming up on that segment here pretty soon, so maybe it'll be highlighted in there. Yeah. Um, Better not steal our idea. I'll yeah, be pissed. Fucking assholes. We'll have to highlight our own fucking idea that we're not getting credit for. Yeah. Delete this part. Yeah, that's probably a good point. Um, so yeah, that's all I've really been up to this week. Do you want to, uh, talk some news? Let's talk some news. Hey Tim, I know what else you can do with that $500 that you just got back, and you'll actually still keep $100 of it. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, actually. No, it's actually a fucking terrible idea. You're right, it's a stupid idea. So, uh, Darksiders 3 is a game I'm excited for. You can give two shits about it. Uh, me and Q are both excited for it. And games often have collector's editions. We, t- we I think we talked about the Red Dead Redemption collection, collector's edition and how weird it was. There's two versions. There's one that's an actual game collector's edition. And, and then, then there's, there's like there's a, actually a collector's just... edition that doesn't even come with the game. Well, this does come with the game. Um, it comes in with the game in a steel case. Um, it also comes with four statues. Um, so the kind of fucked up thing about that is there's, there's three games now with this one coming out. And there's the four Apocalypse uh, writers, but there isn't a fourth game. So the fourth statue isn't actually, you know, one of the four. That <laughs> you know ones. of yet. Well, he's a different character. So there's a uh, Fury, Death, War, and Volgrim, which is a cool Volgrim? character. It well, doesn't matter. He's not. That's Volgrim. Or no, that's Death. Sorry. I was going to say, it looks more like Death. Volgrim's the guy on the left. Um, so the statues look pretty cool. Um, a runic amulet, an exclusive wall scroll, art book and a soundtrack, and exclusive um, armor for Fury in the game that is aesthetic. It doesn't impact the gameplay. So here's the box it comes in. Keeping in mind that's kind of the size of a game box, but longer. Yeah, it's like a comic book box. It does look like a long box to hold comics. It's ridiculously long. I don't like it. 
I mean, I wouldn't keep the box. I know that you're into keeping all the boxes. That box just looks just ridiculous to me. The box looks stupid, but honestly, like, I don't know. So, in my article, I compared it to a, a child's coffin, like, showing up with the UPS, making your neighbor suspicious. I wrote about this on aboutspatchers.com. So, anyway, getting to the point of this whole story, this collector's edition is $400. That's $400. That's enough to buy an Xbox One X or... Yeah, but it has three statues. Does four. It, four, statues. four statues. What are the dimensions? Does it tell you? Uh, approximately 10 to 11 inches tall each. See, that's actually... A- I mean, I'm not saying it's it's a hundred bucks per statue, and that's worth it. Plus, you get a game. Plus, you get books. I'm not saying it's a bad. I'm just saying, holy shit! It's. I mean, I think it's there, it's a lot of fucking money. I think there was a thousand dollar Assassin's Creed Origin special edition. I think there was, on, but yeah, I don't know. It's kind of crazy, especially when the last two games you can get right now on sale for five dollars. <laughs> um, but hey, it's pretty fucking. Ridiculous. You know what? It's a small company. They're probably just trying to raise cash. So good on them. Hope they sell all 200 they make of these. And if they come on clearance on Amazon in two years for 50 bucks, I will buy one. Yep. But until then... The coffins will be delivered. Yes. For Uh, babies. I just mentioned Xbox. Um, They have pretty much put it out that they are... Well, not put it out there. I'm not sure how this leaked, actually. So the next Xbox um, is codenamed Scarlet. Um, Scarlet Johansson? Maybe. Um but they are developing two new Xboxes. So they're just basically going to launch with like a pro model and a amateur model. Not exactly. Uh, one will be along the lines of what you said, a pro model, you know. Yeah. High specs. The other one will be low spec because it'll be a streaming machine. So that's an interesting strategy. I think Xbox going forward doesn't really care where you play their games as much is that you buy their games. I wonder if it's basically going to be more of a beefed up Steam machine. Kind of, um, and but, but, I running, wonder, but running their software. I wonder if they'll have some sort of partnership with Steam. That would be interesting. Um, Steam is definitely coming. They're willing to play with anybody right now. Nintendo, Steam, everybody. Steam, Steam isn't at the place where it's yet where it's ready to negotiate with people like Microsoft. But you know, give Tencent and all the other companies like Epic and uh, Ubisoft and EA nibbling at their heels. Maybe they'd work out a deal. Who knows? Anything could happen. So, um, we've done a lot of little mini consoles. We've done the uh, NES, the Super NES. There's yep. another one coming out that very few people I know of will be interested in, but here it is nonetheless. The Retro Commodore 64 Mini will launch in the U.S. in October. Um, have you ever played on a 64? Oh, Nintendo, yeah, yeah. No, Commodore 64. What was that? I have no fucking idea. Something... Bang. Somebody just got murdered in my house. You gonna check on that? Nah, we're good. Okay. There's a master sword on the wall. Um, let me see what it looks like. I think I have. Um, so the computer's like inside of a keyboard. Yeah, I don't know if I've actually ever like. So all used I ever one. I play. We had one at our school, and we played some text adventures on it. Um, I don't think we had the joypad that they're showing here, the joy joystick. Um, like the graphics are super rudimentary. It's probably more powerful than an Atari 2600. Okay. It's definitely less powerful than an NES. Um, but there's a fair amount of games for it. It's expected to sell around $80, and it will come with, ta-da, 64 games. Because, of course, Ooh. Commodore 64. And plus, each game is like, <laughs> like a quarter of a, what's the smallest unit there is? Kilobyte, whatever. Yeah, kilobyte, nanobyte. It, the games will be small. Like there's probably like less than two gigs of storage on that thing. Jesus if, I'll Christ! Bet, I, but there's hardly any, and probably half of that's the emulator. That's probably like less than 256 megabytes. All right, the next story is for you, bud. Um, well, that's a real doozy. Um, story for oh, it even says story for Zach. Coming from ComicBook.com. Oh, I saw this. You need this game. It didn't doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. But there are other ones overseas. Nintendo. Just announced that they were once making a horror game starring The Legend of Zelda's very own Tingly Tim. What a horrible, strange world we'd live in where a grotesque, ghastly, and reprehensible monster such as Tingle not only exists, but is celebrated. So basically, Nintendo came out, and I'm trying to find the exact quote or if they even put a quote in here. Well, they had a developer, um, but they decided to. Use that developer to make another game. Yep. So looking back eight years ago, we were developing a horror game with Vanpool, 
that starred Tingle as a main character. I think that but would be that, awesome, him in a horror game. Fucking epic. So but that project was canceled due to a variety of I reasons. Just, I wonder if he was like the person being chased or whatever. No, he had to be the person attacking you. That would be epic. Yeah. That would be kind of cool. Be like, like a... Tingle and Tingle Babies chasing you? Mm-hmm. That'd be horrifying. That'd be extremely horrifying. I heard that on another podcast. And I was like, yes, we need this. Revamp this shit. I don't think it got plus the, past the planning stage, so sorry. Yeah, well. Maybe we can crowdfund that, too, while we're at it. Yeah! I don't think Nintendo would license it, though, to us. They're I mean, pretty protective of their IP. That's very true, I guess. Especially that one. So, um, yeah. Anyways, you want to talk some tech? Let's do some tech talk. All right, guys. So for this week, I have a tech talk that I bought over Amazon Prime Day. It was or is the Votiv M90 portable waterproof Bluetooth speaker with built-in subwoofer, built-in 20 watt subwoofer, um, and it has an IPX5 rating water resistance and it's rugged. I will say it's extremely well built. One thing that worries me is the sub on the back of it is exposed. It does have a nice hard plastic shell over top of it, but it doesn't have like a grate or anything like that. So sand could technically get down in there if you were to bring it to the beach or something. Okay. Um, but it's really well built. It's really sturdy. It's really heavy. And it's super fucking loud. And the bass actually hits pretty dang good. I would hope so with a 20 watt subwoofer. Yeah. So For a portable uh, speaker, that's a bit. Yeah. And so... It puts out 20 watts of power, mm-hmm. and it's it's good. It's really fucking loud, really crisp, really clean. I got it for forty nine ninety five on Prime Day, um, down from one ninety nine. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. It's big too. Like yeah, it's a big one. I don't it's know what got you like compare it to in size, like a like a boombox almost. I was gonna say loaf of bread almost. Oh yeah, loaf of bread. That's a good one. Yeah, it's not small. <laughs> no, it's not. It's pretty tall. It's got a nice like. Um, like a uh, like a velvety plastic feel to it, hmm. and uh, the handle across the top, the straps around it, it's all metal. Did you say it was waterproof? Yeah, yes, waterproof. Did. Just probably not sandproof is what you're saying. Yeah, it might not be. I don't know. We're going to test it out when we go this weekend, so we'll see. Oh, I would try not to dunk it in the sand. Well, I'm going to try not to dunk it, but I also have a uh, one-and-a-half-year-old, so we'll see. That's true. Things happen. Yep. Um. So, yeah, that is this week's Tech Talk. Okay. Let's uh, take a break, come back. And oh, did I say it's Bluetooth? I think that's kind of assumed at this point for portable speaker. I guess that's true. So, no, I don't think did. Okay, let's blue team. All right, you ready to take a break? Yep, we'll take a break. We'll be right back um, after this. And we are back. Teaser is in hand. We still have the ghost owl. Right? Ghost owl yeah, it's ghost. it's super chilled though now thanks to ha- hanging out in the freezer for a little bit. Yeah, we went and got burgers. Someone was hungry. I was starving. So, yeah. Now we're all good. All right. So, Tim. um, If I can get back here, you want to kick it? Let's kick it. All right, Tim. Kick us off this week. Well, if you were a listener of any link to this podcast you know that i love all things cthulhu and arcane and occult and this particular kickstarter scratches that itch it is called the book of nine scribes i'm going to let the author and designer of this kickstarter describe it for the next couple minutes hello my name is steve metz amateur scribe and man with an unhealthy obsession for all things supernatural about a year ago i had a dream to make a decorative spell book from the works of H.P. Lovecraft. What I wanted to see was something that was written by hand, on handmade paper, hand-bound, 
wrapped in leather that could go on a shelf and look awesome. Thanks to the Me help too. of some wonderful backers, that dream came true. I remember talking about now, this. Now, a year later, we're ready for the second one. After the success of the first Kickstarter, I sent out a poll to see what backers wanted to see for the next one. Based on their feedback, I came up with this. We're tentatively calling this the Book of Nine Scribes. It's got nine sections in it, written by nine different magical beings who have each done their own section in their own language. The idea is the original book owner took an otherwise blank book and wrote one spell in the beginning called To Call the Scribes. They then put the book alone in a room, locked the door, went to bed, and every morning when they'd wake up, a new scribe had put some spells or other arcane knowledge in the spell book. This continued over a series of months until all nine scribes had written a chapter in the main book. Okay, this is the spell book. It is hand bound in goat hide leather with a handmade symbol of Cthulhu on the front. It's made out of metal. And on the inside, all the interior was handwritten and then printed on 100% recycled cotton As you'll paper. See, this book's so this is all expensive. handmade paper. It's got uneven edges that have been aged, and there are 300 pages of content, which is three times more than the last book. There are two forms of the book, the standard version and the deluxe version. The deluxe spell book has the exact same interior, but we've added all this other stuff. So you still get the Cthulhu symbol on the cover, but now we've added hinges on front and back, I kinda did corners see on all four badass. corners, front and that back. Plus these we'll unique have to put this up on actual iron picture locks. Of the special edition. And of course, a clasp that actually locks the book closed. It's got a good weight to it, it's pretty thick, and all the pages are handmade, and we've aged them each so that they have an old dusty tome kind of look. All right, I'm going to stop it there. He goes in depth on the nine sections, and it's really interesting to me. But um, in case you're not quite as into that stuff as I am, I'm going to save you for the next five minutes. He goes on for a while. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so, but if you're interested, definitely check out the Book of Nine Scribes. There's 22 days to go as we're recording, a little bit less when you hear this. There's currently 93 backers. They were asking for $5,000. They're currently $42,215. Um, $5 get you a friend of the scribes as he describes i sit in a darkened room with a musty tome in my lap raise a glass and give a slow meaningful nod in the direction where i imagine you live <laughs> so i think that's kind of cool um so you can there's some lower levels where you can get like a novel this guy wrote but to get an actual book that he's talking about um it's 325 dollars for the standard edition holy fuck right um hey you got if, the 500 bucks back I know. When I originally put this on our list to talk about, I hadn't even... I was like, this would be cool if I had lots of money. Now I actually could get this if I wanted to. Okay, so for the the edition that I would want, like if I'm going to spend $325, i am going to spend $50 more and get the goat leather hand-bound copy of the deluxe edition with the metal clasp, the unique lock and key, the hinges, the reinforced corner, corners, and the center and that will be delivered around uh, December 2018, and probably more likely to be delivered than Elon Musk's Not a Flamethrower. There's nine backers at this level. Um, it goes on from there. There is a whole bunch of backing levels. I'm going to go to the top one for 495, the Grand Necromancer, um, which includes a goat, goat leather handbound copy of the Deluxe Nine Scribes, plus a goat leather handbound copy of Raphael's Ancient Manuscript of Talismanic Magic, um, which is probably the one that he did before. And a pre-release paperback copy of the modern necromancy novel *Wraith*, off, autographed by the author. So three books: um, the previous book, this book, um, in the deluxe edition, and then a novel. There's 14 backers at this level, um, so it's really cool. Um, if you're into this sort of thing, check out the uh, *Book of Nine Scribes* if you're interested. Sweet. What you got? Um, this week I have something that came across uh, the PDX LAN. Actually, mm -hmm. it's called *Project Oasis World*. It's a new MMO, open-world role-playing game. Um, focusing on community-run economics, sandbox fun, and gameplay. So I'm going to go ahead and let them talk about it. Running on the in Unreal Engine. Looks nice. Very reminiscent of like Grand Theft Auto Hello, 5. Hello, I'm the founder and project manager of the upcoming title, Project Oasis World. 
and I'm so excited to share with you guys what our dream and passions are for this game. What can you do in Project Oasis World, you might be asking. You can do many things. Uh, since we do have a survival aspect and a minor crafting aspect, some of the things might include uh, agriculture, uh, where you grow some crops and then take those crops through a refinery position or a canning facility and create uh, long-term goods in order to make a stockpile of food so you never have to worry about food. You could become a police officer, you could be a criminal and go uh, rob some stores. Uh, you can do a lot of different fun things. Um, the more we're able to get funded on Kickstarter, the more jobs and the more we can grow this ecosystem that we've already developed. What if everybody decides to be a criminal? Our game will be different than other games on the marketplace because we are doing a little bit different style when it comes to player interaction. Uh, this includes ecosystems, survival ecosystems, and microeconomies. And this will benefit the community very well in the long run. Again, what if everybody Don't take my decides word for to be a it. criminal? Let's a little bit more from some of the other team members working on Project Oasis World. Hi, my name is Tessa Merrill. I'm the web developer slash researcher for the Project Oasis World team. I'm very excited for this role play game. This is the game that I've always been wishing and waiting for, which is why I joined the Kinda team. Kind of looks like Sims Cross with God Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, it does. Hello, my name is David. I'm one of the lead programmers over at Project Oasis World. One feature that I'm excited for is implementing a, dy a dynamic economy in which players have lasting effects on the businesses present in the world. I think that this Kickstarter is going to be successful just due to the fact that we are determined gamers who really just want to break away from the norm and create something that's fun that we want to play ourselves. Hello, my name is Taylor Everland. I'm here with the Project Oasis World team. I'm the network engineer for the team. Uh, I'm really excited for this Kickstarter coming up this year. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun for everyone that likes roleplay games. Something I personally enjoy, but wanted to find something that I could be interactable with everything in the game, including every shop. Uh, one of the cool things that I want to bring to you guys for networking uh, is at least 200 players is my goal. Hi, I'm Jonathan. I'm the modeling and asset designer for the Project Oasis World game. I'm mostly excited about how accessible the world will be to all players and all the objects will be interactable. I'm very confident this Kickstarter will be successful because this rob is hookers? made by a very a dedicated team a and the community behind us uh, is very strong and wanting us to be successful here. Thank you guys so much for viewing our Kickstarter video and I really hope you'll take the I time like the to logo. consider yeah. supporting the us logo and giving epic. a pledge toward us. We really want to bring you the best game possible. <laughs> <laughs> so the logo has like a font which is pretty much a rip off of Grand Theft Auto but it has a picture of a joystick with a palm tree growing on the top of it. Yep. Pretty cool. Yep. With like a sunset in the background. Yeah. So, anyways, that's uh, Project Oasis World, guys, out of Seattle, Washington. They're looking for twenty-five thousand U.S. dollars. Twenty-six days ago, they're currently at fifteen thousand five hundred and forty-three dollars. Sorry, fifteen hundred and forty-three dollars. Oh. One thousand five hundred forty-three. Mm, need some help. Yeah, need a little bit of help, guys. Thirty-four backers so far. Five dollars gets you uh, sharing is caring. $10 gives you the vacation or earn yourself an amazing high-quality printed die-cut sticker featuring the Project Oasis logo. Cool logo. Um, the Resonant gets you, uh, for $20, gets you a, a digital copy of Project Oasis World when it's launched. So mm -hmm. not alpha or beta, but when it's launched. The Resonant Plus is where you guys want to join in at, guys. $25 or more gets you a unique early adopter limited in-game digital t-shirt plus Access launch, which I would assume would be alpha launch, to Project Oasis World and a digital copy of the game. The early resident is, uh, oh wait, the, the early residence where you want to get in at $30. Has a digital copy of the game, the t-shirt in-game, closed beta access to special forum access as well. Uh, big granddaddy of them all, there's actually a couple of these right at the same price level I believe. Um, yeah, there's like... There's a couple of them. There's two of them. I'll go with the last one they put on. The President of Residence Plus. Instead of a dinner party, let's upload your face as an NPC and add your voice in. You'll become famous. The reward is all about you. Digital copy, um, extra project, just a whole shitload of stuff that you guys get for Project Did you say Oasis. How much that was? That's ten thousand US dollars. Ten thousand dollars US dollars as well will get you the president of residence. 
another of the team's favorites as we get to meet you. We'll have a celebration dinner party in Seattle. You also get to choose to name one of the businesses found within the world, and your voice will be forever memor- uh, immortalized as an NPC. So if you ever want to get like an NPC and be like, I want to be the hooker NPC and be like, yeah, I'm going to fucking slit your throat or something like that. Like you could. <laughs> All right. Or you want to be like the psychotic, like Charlie Manson of Project Oasis world. Okay. Tim, um, Tim, I want to be the Charlie Manson of Project Oasis that's world. That's 10 grand though. That's more than the 500 I'm supposedly giving to you. Tim. Give me 500. Maybe I can convince him to let me have the $10,000 level. If you bought 500 lottery tickets, maybe you'll get lucky. That's a good idea. That's a terrible idea. That's why I'm not giving you my $500. Wait, it's going on my computer to go for packs. You son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. All right, what the fuck do you got? All right, my last Kickstarter is called... Um, Hold on. I lost it. I'm coming. I'm still coming. That's what he said. Um, It's called Dewey Decibel System. This is like nerdcore rap. So my daughter has been listening to Hamilton nonstop, and I kind of think she would dig this. Um, I'm going to let them talk about it. This is MC Lars and Mega Ran. Whenever you get to it. Yeah, give me a second. Okay. Uh, while he's no, looking... no, 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 no. Dewey Decibel did System. You, did you see his logo? Does it look familiar? Yep. Hey, I'm MC Lars. And I'm Mega Ran. Wait, no, we're not. Oh, just kidding. Other way around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mega Ran. I'm MC Lars. And we want to thank the fans for the incredible reaction to knock off to our lit hop collaborations. But what's lit hop though? Literature based hip hop rap songs that include excerpts or even the full story of some of our favorite novels, books, graphic novels, short stories, and other pieces of literature. We've done stuff like Flowers for Algernon, the Telltale Heart, and ladies and gentlemen, we're here today at Walden Pond in Concord, Massachusetts, where we just shot a video for our new song, Walden, based on Walden by who? Henry David Thoreau. When the world disappoints you, there's a place you can go. Marching to a different drummer, Henry David Thoreau. Living in the woods with no radio or phone. Two years, two months, two days all alone. Now, Walden might not have been a Times bestseller, but we learned plenty from his lessons. So let me tell you, most people live their lives half asleep, doing what they're told, functioning like sheep. So we're working on a whole album. Wait, I like stuff. that. What the fuck? A great reaction. All right, bud. And we Gotta buy the album. To put this out to you in the best way possible. So, hey, Tim, buy the album for help. me. The album is called The Dewey Decibel System. I don't have to be buying for my daughter. So if you more, want but... to get your hands on this new project, we need your help. We want to make sure you get the best artwork, mm. the best mastering, the best music videos, and the best extra bonus stuff. And we have all these options for you. Thank you guys so much. They have We're a out of here. Ton of right. I'm MC level. Lars. I'm Mega Red. Peace. <laughs> Aww. You made a little heart. heart symbol instead of fist bumping. <laughs> all right so <laughs> nerds the rap gotta love it they're looking for 20 grand they are currently at eleven thousand two hundred fifty seven dollars with 202 backers 26 days to go so they're halfway funded and they still got almost a month so it's looking good um ten dollars gets you the shakespearean special digital pre-order of the album which you receive a week before the official release and a thank you note from ran and lars uh, twenty-five dollars gets you a digital and physical with a bonus EP if they hit their first stretch goal. Okay, there are a shit ton of of bonus packages. Um, so going to the granddaddy of them all, five grand at the Edgar Allan Poe Halloween party. Are you serious? MC Lars and Mega Ran will set up, host, and perform at your Halloween party anywhere in the world. For how much? Five grand. Yeah. We'll set up a Poe-themed shindig as spooky as you want it to be. Just name the place and the boys will bring the tricks and the treats capped off by a full concert by MC, Lars, and Mega Ran. Please contact us at First Logistical Details before pledging. Um, so it includes a Halloween party, a book-shaped USB drive containing all the albums, private live stream conference where you pick the set list, all physical merchandise, hand-delivered at a tour show, executive producer credit on the insert of CD, signed Dewey Decibel System CD, signed poster, signed thank you note, Exclusive Kickstarter only sticker pack, exclusive Kickstarter only T-shirt, bonus lit hop EP if we the first stretch goal is reached, album download a week early, digital thank you, Twitter shout out, custom cartoon drawing by Lars or a custom VGM flip by Mega Ran. Um, and there's other levels that are similar, like going on tour with them for three days, um, a house party, 
Um, so they don't, you have to like pick the location, but they'll show up and they'll do a party. Um, there's a lot of backing levels if you have money and those are like 1500, three grand, you know, if you got some, some money that you could, you can make some stuff happen. Um, let's go down, 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 down. There's one that was like kind of cool and pretty affordable. Um, oh yeah. One where you have input on their set list, which is kind of cool for a um, live stream concert. Well, that's epic. I think that was like 25 bucks. No, I lied. 50 bucks. Still pretty cool. Anyway, if you're into lit hop, as they call it, check out the Dewey Decibel system. That's decibel, not decimal. What's your last Kickstarter? Stomp out ice. Okay. How are you stomping ice? I'm just going to let them talk about it. Okay. Whenever crappy things happen, I try to make objects that can help the crappy things be less crappy. Hi, I'm Ezekiel Muhammad. In October of 2017, during the ongoing Puerto Rico crisis, I made a bunch of greeting cards featuring the faces of Puerto Rican celebrities. I made $1,000 during the Puerto Rico crisis, and I'm hoping to make a bunch more this time. Is that book going right backwards? now, I'm making huh? an enamel. That boat is going backwards. That's based on the Doc Martin boot kicking the Nazi in the face. Yes. But instead of the Nazi, it's a pile of ice. Okay. The proceeds from which go to Act Blue, an organization that is helping reunite the families that ice is separated. Thank you. <laughs> that was trippy. It was trippy, wasn't it? He's like, he's at a dead end street that backs up to like water, and there's a boat going backwards, and the street says end. <laughs> It was weird. So cool. uh, they're making enamel pins, guys. Was there, um, there's like a boot kicking a Nazi's face? There's there's a boot kicking in ice. Okay. Um, so this is out of Brooklyn, New York, guys. He's looking for $1,950, $1,950 US dollars. He's currently at $789, mm-hmm. 12 days ago. Uh, one stomp out ice enamel pin is $15. All right. Sharing level three stomp out. Ice pins times three, thirty-five dollars. Let's get it. Five stomp out ice pins, fifty. In the granddaddy of them all, hand delivered, ten stomp out ice pins, hundred dollars. Hand delivered. Uh, That's not delivered to you by me anywhere in New York City. Uh, Okay, there we go. We'll travel further, but you gotta holler at me first. It's a very like sincere guy. Yeah. It's like, oh shit, Washington. Okay, give me a minute. Yeah, guys, it can be a while, man. Okay, like let me plan it. Yeah, <laughs> you probably would too. Probably would. But I just feel bad. Like the poor guy would probably be hitchhiking across the country, staying in sketchy places. He seems like a nice guy. Like, I'm like a really I nice guy. Might back this. Well, if you do, let me know because we could maybe get the one, three uh, the three pack for something. I don't know. I'm all about stomping ice. That's cool. Um, you said he was like halfway there, basically? Yeah. With uh, how many years ago? Nine? Twelve. Twelve, okay. Yep. Cool. So, yeah, you want to talk about some video games? Let's talk about some video games. All right, what have you been playing, man? I've been playing a bit. Um, I played some more Middle Earth Shadow War, and um, that is still um, pretty much like uh, Assassin's Creed in Middle Earth, which is all right. Okay. I played another game which got a critical update. I don't know if I talked about this last week, but... Um, Middle Earth Shadow of War killed all the loot boxes. So, like, the end game grind is gone now. Like, there was a bunch of BS at the end of the game where you had to, like, either spend a lot of time earning in game cash to unlock these war chests to get rare orcs to build your army to defend these freaking castles. They've made all that defending castle shit, like, optional at the end. That's kind of cool. If you want orcs, you can find them now at orc farms, and they've made currency a lot easier to unlock. They, like, huh. made, they, took, they took the bullshit out of the game. That the publisher made him put in, basically. Okay. That Warner Brothers said, hey, we need to make more money. And they're like, oh, fuck, all right, we'll make these loot boxes. They were like the first company to do it, like way before the whole Battlefield or whatever. Is it Battlefield? Battlefront. Battlefront, yeah. Battlefront had a wait, big what? controversy about loot boxes. But uh, Middle Earth Shadow of War actually did it first, and they got some blowback for it. 
Um, so anyway, that BS is out of the end game, so that's why I picked it up. I also picked up the next game for a very similar reason, No Man's Sky. We've talked about how it severely underdelivered in its early promise. Well, they just this week released a massive update called um, No Man's Sky Next, introducing multiplayer, introducing uh, better flora and fauna on the planets, better music, um, more streamlined UI, better story elements, a um, whole bunch of new stuff. Um, people like uh, Jorge, we both know, are saying it's yeah. basically a new game. Um, a lot closer to what they were originally promising. And it's over like two years old, so I bought it for 20 bucks. Actually, less than 20 because my discount. So nice. Was that, 16 Um So yeah, I've been playing some No Man's Sky. I really dig the look. Like it looks like if you've ever seen like um, sci-fi novel covers from like the 70s, Isaac Asimov, that kind of thing, where everything's all kind of bulbous and pink and green, like all these bizarre colors, very out there like sci-fi. Um, got a cool aesthetic. I'm really digging it. It's definitely got some survival elements that I'm not super stoked about, but so far it's like the grind isn't too heavy. Like I'm right now rebuilding my spaceship and I got all these supplies to build all the individual parts. But um, Are you having fun? I am having fun. Okay. Um, there's not. There's like, I see there's opportunities for combat, but I've been avoiding it. Just kind of doing my own thing, building my supplies. What type of combat? Like with robots or with like dinosaurs? Or well, what are we there's, talking here? there's creatures, and you could you could shoot them. I'm not shooting any creatures. I'm assuming they attack you back if you shoot them. Okay. Because um, you have like this mining gun. It's like a laser that you blast rocks to get the minerals out of them. And I've seen robots flying overhead, and I've I've just because I've read about this game, I know that they attack you if you attack the the creatures on the planet. Yeah. And I've seen spaceships flying by. I haven't left the pl- first planet yet. There's a lot of stuff you kind of have to do in the initial part. Really? I found an ab- abandoned outpost, and I don't know. I just really like the look of it, for sure. So I don't know how long I'll play it, but it's something I've wanted to try. And now that I took out some of the BS and made it better, I'm glad I waited. I've almost thought about writing an opinion article about how it's sometimes good to wait for games. Because games are rushed so fast to get out the door, even if they're not really finished. Yeah, or, Sony kind of really fucked No Man's Sky on this one, I personally believe. Right, and Warner Brothers fucked... Uh, um, Shadow of War. Right, because the developers didn't really want to do this shit. No. This was a business decision from on high. Um, so, in both cases, I'm rewarded as a player. Um, in the case of Middle Earth Shadow of War, I'm rewarded for waiting over 280 days after release to buy it. Um, buy Ooh. It. Right, not only a third of the price, but yeah. like way better experience toward the end of the game. And No Man's Sky, I think, is literally like two years. Or it's got to be close to that. I want to say it was 2015 or 16 it came out. Um, so yeah, um, glad I waited for both those games. Um, I've also been playing Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, speaking of... How's that, that going? It's good. Um, my son was kind of an influencer for this. Like, He loved that game on the Wii U. Like, Loved it. Um there's some new things going on with this one. So you can play it with a touch screen if you're, um, you know, just holding a handheld, um, just like the Wii U. Or they've inter- they've introduced, um, like, sp- spinning controls using the, the um, analog sticks. But what's new with this one is you can each, you can detach the Joy-Cons. One person controls uh, Toad on the screen. The other person controls the camera and is also able to throw um, tomatoes and hurt enemies on screen. And pick up coins with the tomatoes. Um, so we can actually play together. It's a little frustrating at times when I'm like, okay, if I'm controlling Toad, I want to look left. And I'm like, I have to tell my son, turn left. No, your other left. That, <laughs> so it's a little confusing. And if he's controlling Toad, I have no problem. Like, It's better if he controls Toad because I instinctively know where the camera should be. He doesn't have to really communicate to me very much. Um, but I have more fun playing Toad, so we definitely trade off a little bit. Um, it's a cute as hell game. Like Toad is an adorable character. He makes all these cute, happy sounds when he finds stuff, and uh, it's just an adorable game. It's kind of like um, I don't know what it's like. It's like just playing in this little fun, happy playground. I mean, there's enemies that'll kill you, but there's like really not a huge threat ever. And then um, creepy challenge. Creepy challenge. I finally got back in. I realized I was logged out for a week and a half. So, like I said, I've been trying to do equal time with my kids. So the other game I played with my daughter. Okay. Before What'd I talk, you play? Well, I want you to open WhatsApp and I want you to play the theme song I just dumped in there. All right. Um, we actually played this on caffeine um, before she left for her latest camp. Played it for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Got a fair amount of viewers. 
Um, since we don't have a lot of fowl. Were you dreaming about your daddy? Well, somebody was. I mean, it's got a good theme song to so, it. If you haven't guessed already, um, we've played uh, Dream Daddy, and I thought we did it pretty cool. Um, there is a young uh, daughter in the game. I think she's like, I want to say nine or ten, slightly younger than my daughter, um, but very similar, like sarcastic, like attitude. Um, so she, it's a, it's kind of like a um, visual novel style game where you have a lot of dialogue choices. There's not a, there's, there's actually no action. It's all you know, picking responses and talking to different characters. Um, if you haven't figured out what the theme is, you are a single dad. I'm dreaming about a daddy. You're meeting other daddies in your neighborhood. And um, there's, I want to say, six or seven other daddies. We've met all of them at this point. So um, this guy lost his wife in a car accident, and he's raising his daughter alone. They just move into this new neighborhood, and they're meeting all these other characters, like in coffee shops or the mall. And then there ends up being like a, um, a barbecue where you talk to all these different people. Like I said, I would do the voice of my character, which we got to design, by the way. We made him look like a freak. It's like an albino guy with bug eyes. Nice. Yeah. And then there's all these different characters. There's a jock. There's this goth guy. There's this... Um, this Who are you going after? I'm going after this kind of bad boy with a leather jacket that likes to drink a lot of bourbon. Yeah. Talks about stories of the war. And uh, there's another guy I like, too, though. He's so one like, time I blew up a guy's dick. There's this guy, Matt, who runs the coffee shop, and he's kind of, like, awkward. You gotta go after him, man. He can make you coffee in the morning. Yeah, it's fun, though. Like, I don't know. Like, it's just... It's a very... I've heard a lot of people say this game is, It's a very like, feel-good it's game. It's not just a dating sim. No, I mean, there's lots of... Conver like, honestly, like, in all the... We played an hour and a half, two hours. We haven't even got to the flirting stage yet. It's just talking. And nice. I'm, I'm sure there's a little bit of sexually subjective dialogue. and. Whatever. But I, it's... Honestly, it was an awesome bonding experience with oh, my I'm daughter. Sure. Because she's voicing the daughter, and she had to pick up all the other characters. That's awesome. So I picked up any other female characters. Nice. Uh, but she had to pick up all the daddies, so she's coming up with the voices for the daddies. So where can we find this at? Do they store them on caffeine? They don't. If you were watching on caffeine, you missed it. And it was a pretty good performance, I thought, from both of us. That's kind of actually really sad they don't store it or anything. As far as I know, it's gone. Like, Fuck just, me, we gotta talk to Caffeine about this shit. Um, so yeah, we got a bunch of new followers um, while I was streaming. I don't have very many followers on, on Caffeine. Um, I wasn't sure this was appropriate to stream on the Butt Smashers and how people mm, feel about that. So yeah. I, went, I went with Caffeine and we had a good time. Sweet. And it was, it was actually probably my favorite game that I played this week. Just because of my daughter and I voicing the actors. That's it was, awesome. It was cool. So what you been playing? Um, well, this week I have... Let me get back to my stuff now that I'm done listening to Dream Daddy. Um, I've been playing Mafia 3. Yeah. I twitched that for like an hour. So you have not completed that game, have you? I have not. So I'm getting... I think I'm getting closer. I've kind of wanted to go back to do that one DLC with the CIA guy. Okay. But other than that, I'm pretty much done with the game. Yeah. And uh, so... I play... Oh, well, I streamed it Saturday night. Okay. And for an hour, and I streamed some Grand Theft Auto for like forty wait, wait. minutes or something like that. Did you kill any Klux Klan, Ku Klux Klan members? I didn't see any Ku Klux Klan members. Damn it. Okay, I saw a bunch of white supremacists. I fucking beat their face in. Nice. Yeah. Um. And then on Sunday morning, I woke up and streamed another hour. So I streamed like two hours of Mafia Three. Cool. Um. Second hour was on Facebook Live. Um. And we had our own Chris Don. He joined me in for the first like the hour and twenty minutes or something. I streamed it. Nice. And uh. The only thing I did in Grand Theft Auto Five is I started the game, and uh, I had to buy it again. Yeah, you told me about that. You want to explain that? Yeah, I don't. I don't know how to explain it. So I had a, I had a Rockstar Social Club account uh -huh. uh, attached to my personal email account. Okay. And I bought uh, the game, and had it registered to my personal email so account. So did you have this I, on Steam or not? No, it was through Rockstar Social. Okay. And. Uh, Apparently, I hadn't logged in enough or something like that, so I de deactivated my account. So you paid money for this at one point? Yeah, that like sucks. 40 bucks. That sucks. Yeah. Okay, but you bought it again. I bought it again for $11. Yeah, you told me that. I was tempted. I'm like, oh, maybe at that price. But I mean, you could borrow it from me now. Just link my Steam account to yours. You can download and play it. 
Right, because I would probably only really want to dick around and like look at the pretty city and stuff. I don't know to actually play the whole campaign. The campaign's actually really good. So what did you tell me? Um, is it Trevor or whatever is the psycho? Yeah, the Trevor's a fucking psycho. The Trevor, it's Trevor. Trevor. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good game. Um, and basically, I got in and I went to the strip club. Nice. So I saw some boobs, boobs, and smacked uh-huh. some girls' ass, and I walked out and I was done with the game and moved around Mafia Three. <laughs> um, right. There's strip clubs in that game too, I think. There are, yeah. I there's saw some boobs on Mafia there's Three. Definitely horror houses, and I think there's a strip club too. Yeah. Um. So I did that, and that's all I really played this week. Okay. Well, we got some new games coming out. Yes, we do. Talk some game releases. We have a uh, Zakira Pinball Nintendo Switch. Call it Zakaria Pinball. Zakaria Pinball Nintendo Switch Life Goes On, which is uh, the pre pre prequel of Life is Strange. I'm just kidding. I really don't think it is. Is there a song called Life Goes On? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. Yeah, Nintendo Switch. The Banner Saga 3. PC, Mac, Nintendo Switch, PS4. Mega Man X Legacy Collection. PS4, Nintendo Switch. Mega Man X Legacy Collection 2. Nintendo 4. Or Nintendo 4. PS4, Nintendo Switch. No Man's Sky. Xbox One. Finally drops. Semblance. Nintendo Switch. Toby, the Secret Mind Nintendo Switch. Yeah, nice Mac commercial in the middle of a fucking podcast. I'm trying it, life goes on. Yeah. 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 Ooh, ooh. This sort of works. Ooh, ooh. Oh, this is dumb. Nice waves, bro. Oh, she, got, she got big boobs. It's Fergie. Oh, is it? Fergie. She ain't no Virgie, I know that. <laughs> no. There's your copyright strike. All right. Thanks. Continue. Yeah. Uh, Air Heart Tales of Broken Wings, PS4. Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill Slaps and Beans, PS4. <laughs> what? what the fuck? Uh, Candle, PS4. Gnome's Garden 3, PS4. Narcosis, PS4. The, sounds cool. I mean, that sounds pretty cool. The Persistence. PS4. Phil's Epic Phil Apix Picture Adventure. That does not sound cool. Uh, that's Vita PS4. Train Sim World PS4. Yee's Memory of Saleta. It's uh, Q streamed that today on Facebook, so you can still catch it on the button smasher. Sweet. About an hour he had uh, streamed it today. PC. Remothered. Tormented Fathers. PS4. It's like the opposite of Dream Daddies. Yep. Sleep Tight, Nintendo Switch. Candle, The Power of the Flame, Nintendo Switch. Through the Ages, PSC. Crossing Souls, Nintendo Switch. 2064, Read Only Memories, Integral. That's a cool game. Nintendo, Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch, though. yep. Game Tenku, Tengoku, Cruise and Mix, PS4. Go Vacation, Nintendo Switch. And Hello Neighbor, PS4, Nintendo Switch. So that brings us to the end of the week. Uh, this podcast, guys. Until next week, don't forget to check us out at facebook.com forward slash plug and play show, Twitter and Instagram at plug and play cast, youtube.com forward slash plug and play gamer, and until next week, don't forget to prime and shine. Stomp ice.